Hello everyone, it's David Swinowski here with Rubble Road Soapstone Kits and today we're going to work on one of our most Canadian kits that we have, the beaver. So if you want to move on in, I'm going to show you how we're going to carve the small kit here with the three pieces of sandpaper and make your very own soapstone carving. Alright, so here we have the beaver shape. We have the tail, the hind limbs, the front limbs, and then the face, the head, the back. So we're going to use the three pieces of sandpaper. Start off with the 60 mesh, head to the 320, finish up with the 600 grit. I have a bin of water here to help control my dust. Keep all my mess contained in a bucket so cleanup is simple and easy. I'm going to choose to work on this side today. As you can see, so soft, I can scratch it just with my thumbnail right there. But uh, we're just going to use the uh, 60 mesh to do all of our shaping here today. I'm going to fold this up. And when I fold it up, it gives me a nice ridge along here. And this is the ridge that I'm going to use to do all my primary uh, grooves and patterns that I want in my stone. So maybe pinch that a little bit narrower. I'm going to definitely want to create a groove to separate the tail from the body. I'm also going to want to create a neckline little groove for the uh, front limbs and then also I'm going to try and create the rear hip there as well. So I like to dip everything in the water here before I get going and I'm going to start with the, the back tail one here. So when I'm making a curved groove I just kind of work that sandpaper in that curve that I want and just back and forth staying on the same line as much as I can a train on the track I'm just gonna chew 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 in my way into this stone right so you can see how that creates that nice little line there you can definitely see that definition you want to make sure that you're rinsing your carving off trapping that dust in the bucket but also rinsing off your sandpaper as well to get that grit right back out okay one thing you have to remember is we're only removing stone, we're not adding any rock. So any aspects of your carving that you want to stick out, you kind of have to leave them alone and carve the existing stone around them down to help create that depth in the rock. So we've got a nice groove started here for creating the back of the hip. Don't have to go halfway into your stone, but making a definite groove into the rock itself Definitely deep enough for your fingernail to grip onto there. So now I'm going to make the neckline and then I'm going to make that back hip line. So I'm just going to turn my carving around. And with the beaver, you kind of notice there's a little bit of a lip right there, a little bit of a, a dip in the rock. I like to kind of match that dip with the front of those, uh, the top front arms, right? So if you kind of move in there where the dip is on the back, and then I match that up to the front limbs, because these are essentially the beaver's teeth, and those are the back legs. It's a metamorphic rock that we're working with here. So you do get some ranges in the uh, heat and the pressure that these things go through in their formation. So you do get some variances in the hardness of this stone as well. Not every single piece of soapstone you're gonna carve is gonna be exactly the same. And you'll find that the colors kind of dictate those hardnesses for you as well. So browns tend to be the softest. Green's kind of in the middle and then the purest form is so green it's kind of black. That steatite is beautiful to carve, takes a little bit more effort, but the trade-off is the harder rocks take better smooth polish. So if you're looking for a nice smooth finish on that rock, you're gonna try and you know, wanna try and work with a harder rock. So now we definitely have a, a neckline, tail line. Now let's try and create a nice back hip here on this as well, okay? Dig this in a little bit. And because I've been using this corner for a bit, I'm gonna to switch to the other side of my sandpaper, kind of freshen that up. A 
and just kind of smaller movements back and forth. And if you're having a hard time seeing what's going on, just rinse everything off and then you can kind of see it a little better and just continue doing what you're doing. Working those grooves deeper into the stone. And I really want these rear, the back hips to kind of flare out. I want them wider. I'm gonna carve the front limbs down. I'm gonna round off the head and then also narrow the, the teeth a little bit as well. See, it's really kind of coming through. and have a nice rounded hip here. Front limbs, there's the head, nice separation. So now we can kind of lower these front limbs a little bit to give us a little bit of separation between the back hips and the front of the head. And all these little things we do just kind of add up by the end of the carving here to give us a little bit more realistic carving. So with the groove of the hip here, I'm also gonna bring that across the back. With the smaller carvings, I do like to concentrate my efforts onto one side. And then you can always write your name, or if you're in a classroom setting, maybe the year that you guys made this. So it's a good keepsake as well. And most artists do sign their works, so. Now bring those grooves right across the top. So now to kind of bring this middle section down a little bit, I'm going to refold my sandpaper a couple times. Give myself a much narrower piece of grit to work with. And if we want, we can just kind of narrow the top shoulders up here. And then I'll also keep the bottom paws a little bit wider. I will bring them down just a little bit so everything is a little bit lower than the back hips. But I'm also gonna narrow the shoulders more than the bottom of the, the paws as well. working, trying to stay in that concentrated area in between the head and the back hips. I'm also gonna go in between those grooves as well. One thing you're gonna notice with the silhouettes is that there is a, um, a bit of a striping pattern on there. This is caused by the bandsaw when we cut these shapes out in our warehouse. So you're going to want to make sure that you get rid of that striping pattern from the bandsaw. This is what's going to help bring out those natural colors of this stone as well. So not just are we shaping it, but we're also preparing the surface of this rock for polishing as well. So small scratches from sandpaper number one are fine. You just want to make sure that that striping pattern is gone, okay? I'm 
around the outside hip a little bit as I'm doing this. So for me to see the natural colors in this rock, the only way to really see them is to sand them out to bring out those natural colors. So as we're kind of working here, I'm just gonna scuff the whole thing up everywhere just to help bring out those natural colors. And the reason I like to concentrate my efforts onto one side is if I was to treat this like a 3D piece and split the front limbs and the back limbs so that I would have four legs, they would all be so thin, they'd be prone to breakage. And they just snap right off. So we don't want that to happen. For the front teeth here i just kind of imagine the, the roundness of the head here and then i just kind of narrow the teeth section where i think that should be your thumb is great you'd be shocked at how much strength you can get underneath your thumb in a concentrated area to help grind that stone away. And a good grip on my rock, supporting it well, staying over top of my bucket the entire time. So just in case I do drop it, it's just gonna fall into my water and shouldn't be a big, big deal. How low do you go on those teeth? Depends on how much you want that cheek to stand out. So if you want that cheek to stick out a little bit more, just carve those teeth a little bit lower. I still wouldn't go more than that halfway point. So we go a little bit further with uh, grinding those teeth down. But you don't wanna go too far. You need to leave a little bit of substance behind for the strength and stability of your carving as well. cheek off. Get rid of the stripes on all the bottoms, all three of those points at the same time. Just leave that sandpaper flat. And then even the, the back side where we're not carving any shapes there, I still wanna see that natural color come through. So I'm still gonna scrub that just to help bring that natural color and beauty of this stone out. It doesn't take a lot. Just give it a couple good scrubs, take a look at it. You're just looking to get rid of those gray stripes on that rock, okay? Little scratches are fine. You might be wondering, well, when am I gonna make it smooth? Doesn't matter what stone you're carving, it's gonna be a process. So right now we are shaping our rock 
and adding the, the details to it, the smoothening will start to come once we actually switch to sandpaper number two. But you really want to make sure you've got all your carving done before you go to sandpaper number two because once you start going to the second sand stage, it really starts to smoothen out that rock, but it doesn't do any shaping for you. So you really want to make sure that all your primary carving and shaping and details that you want in your stone are done before you go to that second sandpaper stage. And I'm gonna flare that tail downward a little bit. I'm gonna create like almost like a little ramp here. So I'm just gonna stick closer to the body of the beaver, closer to the hind end. I'm not putting too much pressure on the tail. On the very tip of it, I wanna put most of my pressure here in front of the tail, close to the base of the body. Just kinda of make a ramp out of that. The beaver does have a pretty wide, fairly flat tail. We don't want to make it too flat because we definitely want to make sure it's strong. We could also make some little toes. We could carve a little groove, a little notch in on that back hip, just to kind of give it the appearance of some little back feet there. So I'm gonna fold my sandpaper just once here, just to keep it nice and thin. I'm gonna kind of tuck that in. So the deal here is it's gonna start to carve into those front legs a little bit at the same time. So we wanna try and minimize that as much as we can. So by keeping the sandpaper thin, I can kind of push this side away from those front limbs as I'm pushing in to the back hips to create that foot ridge. But if you do carve into those front feet a little bit, it's not that big of a deal. Just stop, take a look and see how it's going just to make sure you don't carve too deeply into those front legs. You want to make sure you're leaving something behind there. And if you find your sandpaper isn't working as effectively as you like, just open it up, fold it in a new spot. Give yourself some nice fresh grit to work with and go right back to shaping. So now I'm just gonna go in and get rid of that square edge that I've kind of left behind by creating that ridge. By creating the feet, we kind of made a little bit of a, a notch there. So we're just gonna round that off into the hip itself again.
too bad. So now I'm gonna narrow the top of the shoulders there, as I was saying earlier, to really help the back of the hips really flare out and then really create some separation between the back hips and the front hips and then also, or the front legs, and then also the front legs and the head as well. It's gonna really help me kinda round the head off as well. So I'm just gonna fold that sandpaper up a little bit more again. And just use that thumb technique right on the very tops of the shoulders here. Just really concentrate my efforts into that one small area. Don't forget to rinse out that sandpaper. more on those square blocky edges. we can, right? I'm just going to create like a little bit of a shoulder for those front limbs. So just using the very tip of my sandpaper here, I'm just going to carve above. So I'm just going to kind of individualize that front leg. So we're going to have some front legs down here and then the shoulders up top, right? That's all we're doing is just kind of creating some definition for those front little beaver limbs. bit more. Even hold your sandpaper there, use your other thumb if your one hand's getting sore and just push. All right.
So now that we've curved a little bit, we have a little bit of depth between the front limbs and the top of the shoulder. We've definitely got the back hip, the tail, the head, and the teeth. So if you want to, you can have some fun, put some stripes on that beaver tail. Could make it a little bit narrower. It's still pretty thick. We could narrow that a little bit. I'm gonna just flatten that out a little bit. And I might just put a little bit of a crisscross pattern on that, just for fun. If you wanted to, you could always just go through your other sanding phases now, smooth it out, and then just draw that crisscross pattern on if you didn't want to make it as deep or as bold. So when you just draw it on with like a nail or a rasp or some kind of a metal point, it'll really stand out. And it doesn't need to be as deep as your other details, especially after you've already sanded everything. That's all I'm doing. And we still have that kind of a, a ramp, you know, so that the tail flares down and then the hips pop out. We still want those hips to pop. Give us a little bit more dimension to our carving here. Flattened out. So I put my crisscross waffle pattern on the back tail. And you might need to open up your sandpaper and use a fresher spot. side. So I'm gonna mix it up. Put at least three grooves on the other side now. Pretty good waffle pattern there. 
Doesn't need to be as pronounced, so we can always sand those down a little bit so they're not as pronounced. If you wanted to, you could also bring that pattern over to the side of the tail. I'm just gonna leave mine on the top. I'm not gonna worry about the edges here today. So I think I'm pretty happy with that. Now I'm looking for any of that striping pattern from the bandsaw. If I see any bold white lines right now or scratches that I haven't made, I wanna get rid of them. Especially looking into the little nooks and crannies. You wanna make sure you do this as best you can before you go to stage two in the sanding. I'm pretty happy with that. So sandpaper number one I'm done with. Knock that water out, send it off to the side. Working on sandpaper number two, which is a 320 grit. Even has a number two right on it. So that's how you know it's number two. Throw that in the water. Now, once I go to sandpaper number two and three, I have a don't and I make sure that I don't scrub my soapstone on the bottom of my bucket. As we use this first grit, you might notice that you have lost some of the grit as you were shaping. That grit has fallen off the paper and is now in the bottom of your bucket. That's silicon carbide. That is harder than the stone that you are carving. So if you're scrubbing your soft soapstone across that, it will be putting tiny scratches back in your soapstone. So for sandpaper two and three, I do my best just to dip it. And then when you're scrubbing, make sure you're scrubbing with the grit side, not the side with the writing. Pick one spot. You know, I like to try it with the flat side first. Give it 15, 20 good scrubs. Push, 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 push. Stop, rinse it off. Take a look at it. You should notice those natural colors really coming out right now. The texture is changing as well, starting to get very, very smooth. Now, the one thing you need to remember is once we go to sandpaper number three, sandpaper three will not really get rid of any scratches. So any scratches that you don't want to see, they have to be gone before you go to sandpaper three. So now it's all about consistency again. Lots of rinsing with sandpapers two and three. Finally get my best finish that way. And then with sandpaper two and three, you can also fold these papers up just like you did with sandpaper number one to get into all those little nooks and crannies, all the hard to reach areas. So I like to try and get the, the biggest pieces or the largest surface areas of my carving first. I'll just leave my sandpaper nice, open and wide. And just give it a quick once over everywhere before I begin folding it up and getting into those hard to reach areas. And with sandpaper too, you should really notice the natural color starting to come out. I've got some black, some green in here, really nice. Gonna get some varying shades of brown in some of this rock as well. It's one thing we love about using the Brazilian soapstone is just the, the incredible range of color that we get. Been ordering this stone for over 10 years and we still see new colors. Any little scratches, you can even use your thumb technique on those as well. Any little problem areas, gone. So now for all the little nooks and crannies, I'm just gonna fold my sandpaper a couple times, maybe two or three times. Tuck it right into those hard to reach areas. Just to try and do the best job possible. I'm not pushing too hard. I want that sandpaper to kind of fill that area. And if I push too hard, it'll flatten that sandpaper. So I just kind of want to try and leave it. This general kind of 
fluffiness. Now I might fold it up just to round off once I'm out in the open again. But when I'm tucked into here, I want that to kind of fill up that gap as best as I can, as best as the paper can as well. And then just let the sandpaper do the work. Lots of rinsing. And the more consistent you were with sandpaper number one, the easier I find sandpaper two to be. And the more consistent you are with sandpaper two, the faster and easier sandpaper number three will be. It's all about consistency right now with each individual paper and just being as thorough as possible before switching to the next stage. And if you find you have some deeper scratches in there and sandpaper two isn't doing quite the job you want it to, you can always go back to stage one, make those deeper scratches a little bit shallower so that it's a little bit easier for you to erase them with sandpaper number two. Thumb technique is always good. All those little grooves we made. You could go into your waffle patterns as well if you like, but you know what, I kind of like the contrast because it's going to be kind of grayish in there. So I'm just going to leave it and just sand the top of it. I'm not going to go into the individual grooves for that waffle pattern. We're really trying to be thorough right now. I'm really looking for any scratches that I don't want. And then just like sandpaper one, where we kind of opened it up and refolded it, you might want to do the same thing with sandpaper two and three. You open it up, fold it in reverse to bring out some fresh grit to just do the best job possible.
really close to sandpaper number three right now. All right. No big blatant scratches anywhere. Natural colors coming through everywhere. Looks really nice. I feel like I am good to go to sandpaper number three. So tap that, that water out. Sandpaper three goes in. This is a 600 grit. Almost twice as smooth as sandpaper number two. <clears throat> Pardon me. So again, pick an open side, give it 15, 20 good scrubs, stop, rinse it off and feel. That should feel like glass, right? Really, really smooth, big texture change. Lots of difference from when we started, it was just a drab gray. Now we've got some beautiful color patterning going through here. You wanna match that texture up everywhere. And if you did a really good job on sandpaper number two, Sandpaper 3 is the fastest sandpaper because it's just a quick once over on the surface of your rock. Doesn't do any shaping, doesn't get rid of any scratches. It's just going to smooth that existing surface that you have. Once I'm finished with Sandpaper 3, I'm going to rinse this carving off in clean water to get this dusty water off of it. I'm going to let that sit overnight. I want it dry before I use that finishing oil that's provided in the kit. Because oil and water don't mix, so we definitely want to make sure that our carving is nice and dry. And there could be a couple seams in the rock that might not have split or broke, but they will be the last to dry. If you're working at home, you might be able to just sit it in a nice sunny windowsill or even put it in the oven to warm it up just to get all that moisture in there gone so that you can do the oiling. And if you're gonna use the oven or stove to heat it up, then you can definitely do the oiling the same day. You just wanna make sure that when you flick water at your carving when it's in the oven, that it instantly evaporates on the surface I don't want to scrub away my waffle pattern either, so we want to make sure you didn't get rid of that with sandpaper number two. If you did, just go back to sandpaper one, put it back in. Taking a look. You know, it feels pretty good. I like the way it looks. I'm pretty happy with it myself. So I feel like I am good to go to rinse this off and get ready to oil as soon as it's dry. So that is going to be my beaver right there. I'm going to go rinse this off in clean water and start that drying process. All right, so the beaver is now dry. So I like to oil the backside that we didn't carve first. I've got it on just a piece of uh, paper towel here just to kind of protect the surface that I'm oiling on. And then the oil, we just have that in the little containers with a Q-tip applicator. So we're just gonna kind of spread that around. Now that the carving's all dry, we rinsed it off, made sure we got all that dust off of there. And I'm just kind of making sure I get all the way around all these edges here. Quite liberal with it. And once I have the one side finished, I'm just going to flip it over. And now we'll oil the other side. And when it's dry, if you were to notice any scratches or anything that you might have possibly missed um, previously, you could always just use that sandpaper and just go right back to it. Just make sure that when you do 
you just re-rinse your carving again to make sure it's clean and dry. Move this around, making sure I don't have any hidden dry areas. So now I'm gonna let this sit for at least a couple hours before I wipe off the excess oil, and then I'll have my very own finished soapstone carving today. And there we have our finished 2D beaver. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope the tips were helpful for you. If you would like to see any of the other shapes that we have available, please check out our website. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And thanks for joining me here today. I am David Spinowski with Rubble Road Soapstone Kids.